He shut me up. You, you know what? What are you laughing for? You're not another tease. What are you doing with my bird? I beg your pardon, Jean. I'm not your bird. What's going on? You just kiss me, that's all. So you send me on a wild goose chase just so you can fill her up? What do you mean, a wild goose chase? Maybe I should have felt your bird up when I went round to see her. What do you mean, a wild goose chase? Because she didn't know what I was talking about. I mentioned something about an overdose and she just laughed. I felt a right bird. You're so selfish. I've never known someone to go to such lengths just to pull a bird. She's all right, then. Your social secretary... You know she's all right. Well, how do you know you've got the right girl? Because I asked her name, stupid. Only th there was a girl found earlier on dead. Well, this one was very much alive unless she'd been spirited down. Short bird with short dark hair. <laughs> Aren't you pleased that she's all right? All right? She's done a con job on me. She's made me look like a bloody fool. You didn't care for her. You just couldn't live with her guilt. Now get her out of there. Don't you touch me. I'll do you for assault. Right. And why should I do your dirty work anyway? Look at him. There's the difference between the man and his image. A chirpy voice on the radio disguising a character of conceit and thoughtlessness. Sitting there, the local celebrity DJ feeding out pat for hours on end influencing impressionable young kids who look up to you because you play all the right tunes and believe in none of them. And some of those kids, the feminine variety, are taken in by this distorted image you project. And you consume them and then discard them like... like voice fish and chip wrappings. Why are you a celebrity? You've got no talent. You just play records. Only a lot of other people hear your emotionless program propagating an establishment view over the air. In spite of what the kids think you think, because you've got to make money. Does anyone want a cup of tea? No, you Pity ran about, you is, ran about. I understand. You're quite intelligent. Oh, yes. I know a bit about you. I know people who know you. But you weren't worried about Angie. You were more worried about yourself. It might get in the papers, ruin your career, destroy your popularity. Self-centered, see? You want to carry on being a celebrity and popular. Good old Pete Lyons, one of the lads. He's a household name. And he's not a normal human being, you know. Goodness me, really. No, it's the truth. He's plastic. Get away. It's God's truth. How amazing a plastic person. Because he doesn't care, really, you know. And it's sad, really because he'll drift through this world of plastic, insensitive clones and have nothing, nothing whatsoever to offer except an enormous ego which needs pampering and gratifying. I'm not really... I'm not like that. No one drowned when even all that deep set near the arterial road. Some patients waded out, others got boats or rafts. More serious cases taken out by helicopter. And Richard wasn't there. Nowhere to be seen. I don't understand why he'd do such a thing. Now you wanted to have a go at me. You wanted to make me look stupid and unprofessional. Yeah, well, if you didn't bully him so much. I'd better get on to the Nationals. I don't know what's going to make me look like. False story. Well, how do you think I feel? I'm supposed to be program controller around this place. Listen to his program quite a lot, do you? Listen, you've had your say, now get out. You. Wait a minute, I still want to know why you tried it on with her. Because he's weak and inadequate. Listen. It's all right, I'm going. Why'd you come here if you didn't fancy me? Hello, Miss What are you doing here? I met this little fellow at the disco. Uh, I've told you before, Terry. <laughs> Am I not now? <laughs> Well, it's a bit late, won't you? Oh, I'm a big girl now, Mr. Smith. Anyway, they're abroad at the moment, so I'm in a hall of residence. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> right, well, why, uh, would you like to come up to the office for a moment? Friend of yours? Daughter of a friend, yes, John Seisman, as a matter of fact. The MP. The MP. Talk to you two later. They've got the best in the big smoke, and they won't cost you too many green sapsy coffees. MP's daughter. She's in the student. Of course she is. She's president of the union. That's why I couldn't fathom out why she went for me. Hi, and welcome back to Lions' Corner Shop, and we'll be flogging Terry Wogan in more ways than one. Yeah, well, I tried earlier, but you weren't in, right? Yeah, I got locked out of my own house. Mm-hmm, a man like me. Well, of course, I'm, I'm gonna put her out, right? But I can't, she knows Kung Fu. Well, look, Allison, can I come over or not? Anytime after 6 o'clock in the morning? 
for what, 6 o'clock? Oh, he's not going to be there, huh? Yeah, well, that's all right with me. Yeah, Patsy Bird set you up. Well, she didn't make you two happy either, did she? Not to mention this Angela. Don't worry, I'll get my own back. Oh, she's on your hit list, eh? Revenge. She don't do you no good. Anyway, it seems to me you brought it on yourself. Meaning? The way you treat birds. She's a cow. <laughs> Penny, I don't know why you bother, baby. It's just going to get dirty again. I see. We had a party, have we? Hey, Pam. How are you standing and sitting in for days? Right. The sky of a claim he can't make it. Really. Oh, yeah? I've been out all night, and when I get back, Paul's left this groveling little message on the answer. Oh. Oh, why couldn't you do it? I haven't had any sleep. I gotta go see my dentist at six o'clock. Well, he might be in the surgery at six. It's a she, and it's not in the surgery. Ah, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. Well, by breakfast, I'll be interviewing a psychiatrist on male sexual inadequacies. Maybe you should listen. Later.